Imagine that one day you wake up in a completely dark place with no windows or doors. You have no way of knowing whether you are on an accelerating spacecraft or near an object with gravitational attraction, such as a planet. Moreover, there is nothing within your reach and the ceiling is so low that you cannot jump. At some point, someone asks you a simple question. How much time has passed since you woke up until now? Typically, we ponder this after dozing off for five minutes and suddenly waking up in 2078. However, I would like you to carefully consider this question. The main issue initially is how you could assess the passage of time without having access to any tools that indicate it. If you are an observant and creative person, you might use your pulse or the number of blinks to create a new way of measuring time. However, upon falling asleep, you would lose count and return once again to the unknown. So, what is the best way to measure the passage of time in any situation? We have different measures of time for various purposes. We can talk about years, days, decades, hours, seconds, centuries, milliseconds, fortnights, weeks, and the list goes on. However, what all these ways of measuring time have in common is their relation to some oscillation found in the world. For example, the year is marked by the completion of one orbit of the Earth around the Sun. The day is one full rotation that the Earth makes around itself. And hours are determined by dividing this period by 24. Months are defined as a certain number of days, meaning a 30-day month represents the Earth spinning 30 times. The second, in turn, is associated with an oscillation found in nature. Previously, the second was defined as a day divided into 86,400 parts, but currently the International System of Units defines it as the duration of 9,192,631,730 billion cycles of radiation produced by the transition between two layers of the cesium-133 atom. In other words, the second is just another oscillation found in nature. Scientists have determined its value and thus we have the second. Our understanding of time is simply something that repeats in nature. We can even create our own measures of time, like miles, which could be the time it takes for a ball to fall from a specific height to the ground. So what's the best way to measure the passage of time? Seconds? Decades? Milliseconds? Hours? Or perhaps my new definition, miles? Different situations call for different units. After all, that's why we created these specific units. It wouldn't make sense to measure the time it takes to bake bread in years, just as it wouldn't make sense to measure the age of the universe in seconds. What if we used another element instead of cesium-133 to count the seconds? Or if we lived on a planet that spun faster than Earth? Or even in a planetary system where the orbit lasted less than 365 days? The point I want to make is that our perception of time is directly linked to the place where we live, in this case, on Earth. The Earth's position and its rotation speed have affected our definition of the idea of time. Therefore, it's natural that when we think about time, it seems like something simple to measure. Even ancient civilizations defined time in their own way, albeit rudimentary, to help with harvests and other activities. But if time isn't exactly what a clock measures, Remember that it's just counting how many times something has oscillated. So, what is time? I need to push away the simplest idea from our path, the one that says, time is the duration between two events. This is a weak definition, and soon we'll understand why. One of the first individuals to provide a more precise definition for the concept of time was Hermann Minkowski. According to Minkowski, time is a dimension of the universe just as space is a dimension. It's as if in real life, we have three dimensions of space, width, height, and depth, and then we add one more dimension, time. I am standing still in space at this exact moment, but I am constantly moving in time, one second into the future, every second. It was precisely with this idea that Albert Einstein translated his theories of relativity both the special and general theories, and both have been proven numerous times since they were first proposed. The interesting thing about the theory of relativity is that it was, in a way, the first time in physics that time was defined as something, in this case, a dimension. 
Before relativity, time was merely the difference between two events happening. To clarify this, let's turn to classical physics and discuss the speed of a car. I can simply measure the speed by considering a distance x, which I can see with my eyes, and using time, say, how many times my cat blinks between one point and another. If I plug the values into the kinematics calculations, physics still holds up solidly, without a precise definition of what time is. I literally used how many times my cat blinks, and this point is extremely important. In classical physics, you don't need a definition of time, and this is a quite significant statement, stemming from the fact that, for classical physics, time is absolute. It is the same everywhere. Therefore, there's no need to worry about it, and this also applies to other areas of physics, such as electromagnetism and even quantum mechanics, where time can be seen as an external factor. And in relativity, that changes completely. Time is now a dimension of the universe, so it is something, and more than something, it is a dimension, just like space. We can directly experience the three dimensions of space. When I grab a box, for example, I can see its width, height, and depth. Furthermore, with space, I can move easily back and forth, right and left, and up and down. I can walk in space, even return to the same place I was before leaving, because space doesn't have a preferred direction. But hold on, just a moment. I'll have to correct my last sentence because it's not entirely true. Space can have a sense of preference. On Earth, when we throw something into the air, it doesn't go right or left, nor forward or backward, it goes down. So, there is a certain preference in the direction and sense that the Earth's core is. And this happens because we're in a region where space-time is distorted by the mass of an object. In this case, the Earth itself. The fact that the Earth is close to us, or rather, right under our feet, makes everything go towards the core. But if you're in a place in the universe far from any massive object, there is no more preference and you can go back and forth freely in any direction or sense you wish to take. But this is not true for time. You don't have the option to go back in time no matter where you are in the universe, not even far from objects or on the edge of a black hole. But just like space, time is also distorted when it's near an object with mass, and that's why we observe temporal dilation happening in GPS satellites. Another factor that makes time relative is the velocity at which you find yourself. Depending on your speed, it will pass differently. The faster you go, the slower time will pass, meaning two things can influence how we experience time. However, while we can define right and left, up and down, we still can't define what time is. And to complicate things, it's almost as if each person has their own clock and experiences time differently. To illustrate how absurd this is, imagine spending a few hours next to a black hole. For you, only a few hours would have passed. However, upon returning to Earth, decades would likely have passed. People on Earth would have experienced time completely differently from you. But one thing remains true, no matter where you are in the universe, or what your clock is showing, time always moves forward into the future. But what determined this? What property or element of our universe established that time has a specific direction, pointing to where it's going, and at the same time prevents it from going anywhere other than towards the future? The answer is the Big Bang. Just as we are near a massive object, the Earth, which gives a preferential direction to space, downwards, we live in something influential that gave a direction and meaning to time, and that influential something is the Big Bang itself. We can say that we live after an event that influenced time to have a sense. When the Big Bang occurred, it gave us the concept of entropy for the first time, and that's when the idea of time gained meaning. It doesn't make sense to talk about time before the Big Bang, just as it doesn't make sense to ask what's to the north of the North Pole. Some define entropy as the degree of disorder in the universe, or the randomness of something. Others may define something similar, like the number of degrees of freedom an arrangement can take. The point is that once in a state of entropy, that system will never return to a state with lower entropy than that. This is a fundamental law of the universe called the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the entropy of a system can never decrease, and the universe itself is a large system, with its entropy 
always increasing. If I show out two images, one of a broken egg and another of a whole egg, and ask which came first, you'll almost always answer that the whole egg came first. That's the idea of entropy. You never see a broken egg reconstruct itself back into a soul one. But how does this relate to the question of time? Entropy defines where the universe is heading, meaning the entire system moves towards a state of higher entropy. Therefore, the arrow of time is defined in this manner, advancing only in the direction where entropy increases, never in the direction of its decrease. Even we ourselves are affected by entropy. We age because all the chemical reactions that occur in our bodies happen in a way that increases entropy. The second law of thermodynamics is so powerful that it is the way we physically understand the arrow of time, and thus we answer the first part of the question, what is time? We now know why it only moves in one direction, but we still don't exactly know what this thing we call time is. One of the few physical theories that explicitly requires time as a tool is general relativity. However, general relativity is a theory with its own limitations. It is not a fundamental theory of the universe, and I will explain this in more detail. For a theory to be fundamental, it needs to explain all the concepts of the nature of the universe. Unfortunately, general relativity cannot explain singularities such as those of black holes and it cannot reconcile with quantum mechanics. In fact, one of the properties in which general relativity fails to relate to quantum mechanics is precisely in the question of how time is treated. While in quantum mechanics even irreversible processes are allowed, in relativity, it's a different story. In relativity, time interferes with practically everything, and it is necessary to consider how time is passing for each observer, otherwise the results won't align. This suggests that general relativity might just be an approximation of something even more fundamental that we don't understand. For this reason, some physicists argue that time may be just an illusion and not something essential in the universe. Some even claim that time may not exist, but the question of existence can make things somewhat ambiguous. When we say that something doesn't exist in physics, we don't mean that it's not real, but rather that it's not necessary to describe a physical process. In this sense, Time wouldn't be something indispensable to describe the universe, just an illusion we have of something more fundamental. There are research efforts exploring the idea that time is just space in an inaccessible dimension to us, given that we live in a three-dimensional world. Time would simply be a distribution of matter, altered by entropy to become more disorganized, creating the illusion of its reality. Even without definitive answers to these hypotheses, it is interesting to consider that time is essential only in general relativity in the context of physics. In most other areas of physics, time is just the distance between two distinct events marked by the oscillation of something. For us, time boils down to regular events, such as the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which results in the concept of a year. This issue becomes almost more philosophical than physical. Time is so fundamental in our lives that it's difficult to think of it as anything other than an illusion. Honestly, it's one of the things that keeps the universe so interesting, precisely these questions that still remain unanswered. But now, I leave a final question that I would like to see you discussing in the comments. When the universe reaches maximum entropy and heat death occurs, what happens to time? Thank you very much. And until next time.